This is a picture test in practical neuroanatomy. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, you may pause the video and spend your own time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then, replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Now I will deal with the spinal cord. Identify the nerve cell group located at A. What modality of sensation is processed here? The cell group caps the dorsal horn. It is found throughout the length of the cord, but is particularly prominent in the lumbar and sacral levels. This is a lumbar level. And the cell group is the substantia gelatinosa of Rolando. It is formed of a collection of small neurons as well as dendrites of cells which are located in the underlying nucleus proprius. Now incoming dorsal root fibers which convey pain and temperature sensation, first order neurons, which are located in the dorsal root ganglion. This is a peripheral process and a central process. The incoming fibers will pass into the dorsolateral tract of Lisauer. They ascend few segments or descent, but then they will ultimately terminate here at in the substantia gelatinosa. They terminate on the dendrites of uh, neurons of the nucleus proprius. So the neurons in the substantia gelatinosa also they receive input of descending fibers from supraspinal levels and the neurons thus they modify and process afferent patterns related to pain and temperature. So they modify pain and temperature sensations. But these small neurons, they do not give rise to axons that form a tract. The tract that uh, transmits the pain and temperature sensation, the tract cells are located in the underlying nucleus proprius, and they cross through the anterior commissure, then ascend up in the spinothalamic tract. So pain and temperature sensations are processed in the substantia gelatinosa, modified, but the tract cells are not located here. It is their dendrites that are located in the substantia gelatinosa. The cell bodies of the tract cells are located in the nucleus proprius. What is the approximate level of this section? What type of information is transmitted by fibers at A? Note the following characteristics of the section. First, there is a clear lateral component of the ventral horn, a lateral extension of anterior horn cells. Second, there is a small white to gray ratio, indicating that it is a lower segment section. Third, there is only one compartment in the dorsal column, the fasciculus gracilis. So together, these are characteristics of a lumbar level. The dorsal funiculus at this level is formed of fasciculus gracilis only, carrying sensations of position, proprioception, discriminative touch, and vibration from the lower limb, and it is located in A. And the section is a lumbar level section. Identify the structure at the tip of the pointer A. Name the collection of fibers B. This is a dissection of the lower end of the spinal cord, caudal end. Note that the cylindrical cord tapers at its lower end to form the conus medullaris. Below the level of the intervertebral disc between L1 and L2 in the adult, the tip of the conus medullaris continues as a connective tissue called the phylum terminale. The phylum terminale, together with lumbar, sacral, and coccygeal nerve roots, continue down the vertebral canal past the conus to form the coda equina, which means the horse tail. These nerves will exit the vertebral canal opposite their related intervertebral foramina. For example, L4 nerve will exit the intervertebral foramen between L4 and 5. 
L5 nerve will exit the intervertebral foramen between L5 and S1, S1 in the in uh, first sacral foramen, and so on. So th because the spinal cord ends at the level of L1, L2, then these nerves and their rootlets, they have to descend down without the presence of the spinal cord. They form the cord equina, and then they will leave sequentially opposite their uh, related intervertebral foramina. Where are the cell bodies of the fibers of this tract located? From which part of the body is the information transmitted through fibers of this tract? This is a tract located at the periphery of the lateral funiculus, and it is the dorsal or posterior spinocerebellar tract. It is an uncrossed tract. The cell bodies of origin of fibers are located in the ipsilateral nucleus dorsalis, or Clark's column, which is located here at the base of the dorsal horn in the thoracic and upper lumbar segments of the spinal cord, axons will ascend up in the dorsal spinocerebellar tract, uncross the tract. It enters the cerebellum through the inferior cerebellar peduncle. The tract conveys proprioceptive information, unconscious proprioception from the lower limb to the cerebellum. Match each of the following statements with a letter detract. Now in statement one, axons of first order neurons that transmit sensory information from the upper limb to the medulla, these axons are in fact the central processes of dorsal root ganglion cells that enter the spinal cord and ascend in the dorsal funiculus, first order neurons. They synapse on second-order neurons located in the nucleus cuneatus. Here it should be mentioned that as the spinal cord is ascended, axons are added to the lateral side of each dorsal funiculus. Consequently, in the cervical region, which is represented by this section here, the uppermost levels of segmental innervation are represented in the most lateral part, fasciculus cuneatus. So vesiculus cuneatus carries the sensory information from the upper limb to the medulla, and these are first-order neurons. They do not relay in the gray matter of the spinal cord, but relay in the nuclei which are present in the medulla at higher levels. For statement two, axons of first-order neurons that transmit sensory information from the lower limb to the medulla, the same logic is valid here. But the lowest level fibers of segmental innervation are represented in the most medial part of the posterior funiculus. That's to say in C, in the fasciculus gracilis, whose fibers, again, they will synapse in the nucleus gracilis in the medulla. Now, E is the spinothalamic tract. This tract also transmits sensory information. But these are information of touch, pain, and temperature. And the fibers here are second-order neurons, fibers of second-order neurons, not first-order neurons. First-order neurons in the pain pathway are located, again, in the dorsal root ganglion, but the fibers will uh, synapse with neurons that are located in the nucleus proprius, and the fibers of the nucleus proprius, second-order neuron, cross in the anterior commissure and ascend in the spinothalamic tract in E. So this conforms with statement 3. Axons of second-order neurons that transmit sensory information from the trunk to the thalamus are located in E, the spinothalamic tract. Axons of second-order neurons. These second-order neurons in the spinothalamic tract, they do not need to relay in the medulla. They just pass across the medulla and relay with third order neurons that are located in the thalamus, hence the name spinothalamic. Regarding statement four, axons that reach the cerebellum via the superior cerebellar peduncle, this conforms with fibers in D. D is the ventral spinocerebellar tract, while the 
axons in tract A are the axons of the dorsal spinocerebellar tract. The dorsal spinocerebellar tract enters the cerebellum through the inferior cerebellar peduncle. So this conforms with the statement 5. But the axons that enter the cerebellum via the superior cerebellar peduncle are the axons of the ventral spinocerebellar tract in D. Which spinal cord segments form the enlargement in the cervical region? The spinal cord is an elongated cylinder whose diameter increases in two regions, called enlargements. These enlargements correspond to the cord regions from which the spinal nerves supplying the upper and lower limbs originate. So we have the cervical enlargement, which includes segments C5 to T1, where the corresponding nerves form the brachial plexus, and the lumbosacral enlargement, including segments from L2, 3, 4, 5, S1, 2, and 3. So from L2 to S3 forms the lumbosacral enlargement, and this enlargement constitutes most of the lumbar and sacral plexuses of nerves that supply the lower limb. Where do the fibers in this tract synapse? What would be the effect of a lesion in this tract? This tract is located in the dorsal half of the lateral funiculus. It is the lateral corticospinal tract. As its name indicates, cortico indicates that it contains axons of neurons whose cell bodies are located in the motor and other regions of the cerebral cortex. And the name spinal indicates that the fibers are destined to the spinal cord. This tract, the lateral corticospinal tract, consists of 75 to 90 percent of the pyramidal tract fibers. The pyramidal tract fibers are located in the pyramid of the medulla oblongata, hence the name, and 75 to 90 percent of these pyramidal fibers, they decussate in the lower part of the medulla. The small amount of fibers that do not cross at the pyramidal decussation, they form the ventral corticospinal tract, which is present in the ventral funiculus. Now, returning back to the lateral corticospinal tract, the fibers here, they synapse on lower motor neurons, which are located in the anterior horn. The synapse is either direct or indirect through interneurons in the spinal gray. The axons in A in the corticospinal tract are described as arising from upper motor neurons located in the cerebral cortex. Thus, damage of this tract results in an upper motor neuron lesion. Since the tract has already crossed at medullary levels, then its damage in the spinal cord results in ipsilateral upper motor neuron lesion below the level of the damage. Now, this upper motor neuron lesion is characterized by varying degrees of voluntary paralysis, a positive Babinski sign, that's to say upturning of the great toe and spreading of the toes on, the, on stroking the sole of the foot, and spasticity with exaggerated tendon reflexes, all on the same side of the body below the level of the lesion. What is the sequence of spinal cord sections from rostral to caudal? For identifying spinal cord sections, the following rules should be remembered. First, the greatest amount of gray matter, the cells, is largest in spinal segments of the cervical and lumbosacral enlargements, and this is clearly visible in A and B. Upper and lower limb motor innervation necessitates a lateral extension of the anterior horn to provide this massive innervation. In thoracic levels, there is a relatively small amount of gray matter in the anterior horn because the anterior horn cells innervate thoracic and abdominal regions only in the trunk. There are no limbs in here. And this conforms with C. Second, the absolute number of nerve fibers in the white matter increases at each successive higher spinal segment. The reason is that as we go higher, more ascending fibers are added. And as we go higher, there is a smaller amount of descending fibers which are consumed. So the highest amount of 
white matter is located in the upper segments of the spinal cord. Note here that the lowest white to gray ratio in our sections is in B, which goes with a lumbosacral section. And this is confirmed by the presence of a lateral extension of the ventral horn of gray matter for innervation of lower limb muscles. Third, a lateral horn is present mainly in the thoracic region but extends in the upper two lumbar segments. So from T1 to L2, there is a lateral horn. And the lateral horn is clearly shown in section C, which goes with thoracic section. Added to that, the narrow ventral horn, as, as I mentioned. Four, fasciculi, fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus, are both present above T7, above the mid-thoracic level. And they can be clearly seen here in the cervical region in A. You can see fasciculus gracilis medially and fasciculus cuneatus located laterally. While in the lumbosacral region in B, the posterior funiculus only contains fasciculus gracilis. So adding all these together, uh, we can conclude that the highest level of the sections here is A, which represents a lower cervical segment. And second, C is a thoracic level segment. And B is a lumbosacral level segment. So A, C, and B from rostral to caudal.